our next chat now and in an Australian first, local hospitality tech company Redcat has launched a low cost platform that provides struggling restaurants a lifeline. And here to tell us how is Mark Attard from Santuro and Lawrence Patelier from Redcat. Hello gentlemen. Hi, how are you going? Very well, thanks for joining us. Look. How has COVID-19 changed the food delivery landscape? Good question. You want me to start? I, just, <laughs> I think the, um, it, it's, it's made a big change from uh, you've got a, a lot of um, hospitality companies that are fundamentally struggling now because suddenly they've gone from a, you know, an eat on premise sort of scenario, um, moving out into a, I need to have all my food picked up or delivered. You know, and that's a, a, a ridiculous change for most people's business models. Absolutely. Now, yeah. Lawrence, explain Redcat to us. What makes Redcat Stella different from competitors? Uh, so what we've done is we've, um, Redcat's actually a company that does point of sale for hospitality. So we have, you know, thousands of hospitality customers. But what we've done a little bit different is we've said, let's build a, a product or use our technology to build a product that allows people who don't have um, our, our system specifically, you're using Redcat, and allows anybody to actually latch in and do, um, basically do three things. So it allows them to do online ordering, um, it allows them to do food ordering through Google, so it puts their business on Google and their menu and the, the ability to order off of Google, um, and that connects that right through to a, a fixed fee delivery service. So that means you know that you can have your food delivered at a fixed rate um, and actually have somebody literally just show up and deliver that for you completely automatically. Right, okay. So, I mean, Mark, Santura, one of the first businesses to actually join forces with Redcat. So, how has the platform helped you move your business during COVID-19? Well, one of the big challenges with food delivery in general, is, as we were talking about, is that commission structure that most of the big guys play with. And that's fine if you're working on an incremental income, but when, this, when food delivery becomes a large chunk of your income as your standard income, it's not tenable anymore. So, what it's allowed us to do is Really pivot the business quickly um, and make it more affordable for our restaurants, especially during the COVID um, situation where mm. food delivery has become a much larger component of what we deal with. Um, and it's allowed us to do it very quickly because the technology was already in train um, and then Red Cap work in a very agile kind of environment that they're responsive to what the consumer needs are. So it's, it's really helped us get this up and running in a much faster way than it would otherwise be able to do. So I guess we're in this time, we've got Uber Eats, we've got Deliveroo, we've got Menu Log, we've got all these competitors. Mm. How do you sort of navigate as, you know, from the Santuro standpoint, which provider to go with? Um, in the current <laughs> environment, you kind of go with everyone mm. you can because you don't want to put any sales channels out of the mix. Um, but absolutely what, what we're looking at now is um, if we're offering delivery ourselves, then effectively those guys become a competitor to us as well, even though we're using them as a sales channel. So our priority will absolutely be through our own channels. So we would we would be pushing mm. all our marketing and all our efforts towards delivery through our own Centuro. So this is obviously a perfect time, I guess, in terms of we've never used mm. these services more, Lawrence, but how much time mm. and work goes into the development and the upkeep of the technology behind <laughs> a platform like this? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's, Redcat's been around for 25 years. Um, I will say when, co so there's about 50 staff. And when COVID hit, we literally took our entire staff and uh, you, you got to use the word pivoted at least once. So we pivoted the company. <laughs> the buzzword, um, and that's we the actually, buzzword of the day. <laughs> got to say it. Um, so we actually took the entire group and said, okay, we're going to take everybody from development to support to everybody and focus it specifically on those three things. I will say we also put a lot of work into our integrations into the Uber Eats and the Deliveroo's and the DoorDashes and the menu logs of the world and made sure that we could get as many customers as we could up onto that integrated solution, which means they can use those services um, and save, um, basically save a lot of labor to use them, which allows them to work, you know, in COVID, you're working with as little labor as possible to generate as much income as you can because you're struggling. So we put everybody onto that really small focused bit of, uh, of area. Um, and, and it's been really successful in terms of delivering a, a really cool product that allows other, you know, other non Red Cat customers to come in and, and just grab those great benefits around the delivery and the and online ordering in Google. So. 
Well, obviously, we've heard a lot of argy-bargy, I guess, particularly during this time. I guess it's just brought it to the fore mm. in regards to fees. So what does Red Cat Stella mean for, mm. I guess, those small and medium-sized businesses in the hospitality industry that were struggling to keep up with those competitive fees? Yeah, so one of, I mean, as Mark was saying, so what this allows you to do is it means that your source of order, so the first thing is how do I get an order? So in this case, you've got your own online ordering and you've got Google. So your online ordering is helping you get your own customers, pro probably to serve your own customers, whereas the, the Google side of things is probably helping you more to find new customers. You're bringing both of those in at, you know, the fees are low. So you're looking at around 3% plus some credit card transaction fees. So it should be under 5% for your acquisition of a new customer or of, a, of an order. Um, and then the delivery itself is at a fixed cost. So what that means is you can budget for that cost. Um, so it's a, I think it's $11.80 actually. So it's a, a fixed cost. And it means you can pass some of that on to the consumer. So you can actually say, well, my delivery fee is X. You then know what you're, um, what you're up for in terms of that, of that delivery cost. Um, if, you try and, if you put that into a competitive world, um, the aggregators will go out and find the, the, the customer for you. So it is a slightly different service but they're taking a percentage of that that sale. So if it's a very large sale, if just if it's a $100 sale, you know, 30% of $100 is around a $30 fee. So it does allows you to keep control of that of that um, expense and and operate profitably. I mean, the other part that comes into it because you're doing it, you actually own the customer data too. So then now you actually know who ordered, what they've done and you can work with that. So yeah. yeah, okay. And Mark, I guess, look, we've seen the announcement of restaurants and pubs and small businesses, cafes starting to open again, but certainly it's in small capacities at the moment. So how do you see that starting to impact food delivery, delivery services? I think delivery is going to still be a, a very large component of what we're dealing with for some time to come. Um, the, the standard rollout that the government's proposing, uh, providing um, it's a little bit of relief on the dining front, but it's actually can be more of a logistical nightmare in how you manage that. Yeah. Um, it's very hard when you're running a restaurant to have someone counting people coming in the door, telling people to go away. Um, so there will be restaurants that don't even adopt it until they're allowed to go to almost full capacity, um, just because of the logistics behind it. So I, I can't see delivery going away. I think what's happened is actually opened up, or it's accelerated the adoption of delivery across people that wouldn't have otherwise looked at it. And I can't imagine that they would just suddenly drop that altogether. So mm. I think what we'll see going forward is a um, probably a larger component of delivery still staying, staying, but we'll see a, you know, a slow return back to the experiential side of dining out, which I think people are craving a bit more of at the moment. Yeah, it's absolutely. Worth, I was going to say, continue, it's probably worth also... I was just going to say, it's worth saying too, you've got to remember, once we we're allowed to go out and we're allowed to dine in, it's going to mean at that, especially in those reduced circumstances, it's going to be hard to actually find a place where you can actually go and eat because they're going to be pretty heavily booked, yeah. right? So this, that, that just means that even though we're going to want to do this more often, it's still going to take some time until there's capacity to, to actually serve us all. So delivery and takeaway are still going to be, I think, pretty important for quite a while. And what about technology, I guess, overall in the role of, of the future of the Australian hospitality industry? Where do you think we're going next? Do you want to talk about that a little bit or do you want me to? Where are we going next? Well, so what we find is that the, the, the most important part of the technology that we work with is actually around enablement. And what that means is as things evolve and the next thing comes out, um, making sure that your technology platform is, is built to enable you to bolt that on or, or to expand and do the next thing. So one thing that was coming out just before COVID hit and was starting to become a new trend was what we call order to me, right? Which is basically, um, I'm gonna be in your venue at a table and with my own device, I'm actually gonna make an order, but you'll know I'm at table seven. So I'll do that order on like online, but on my phone. And I might order for the whole table or I might order just for me and it'll actually be brought straight out to me. So I don't actually um, necessarily go up and order or, or interact in any other way. And I've got a menu that could be multilingual, for example. Um, it's got pictures, could be more interactive and I can make my choices. And I think that coming out of COVID, um, now that's gonna become important for a couple of different reasons. One, because, well, we still like the idea, but two is it's also a contactless way of me ordering, right? So I, now I don't have to interact as deeply with another human so I can stay a little bit safe. Um, and I think that that could be one of those, uh, that's gonna be one of the next trends that starts to kick in. 
Why would we want to see people? After all this time, why would we want to <laughs> sit, sit on our phones a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gentlemen, it's certainly an interesting time, that's for sure. Look, if people want to find out more information about Red Cat, how can they do that? Uh, the website's a great place to start. So www.redcat, R-E-D-C-A-T, I just on my shirt, uh, .com.au. Um, we'd love to talk to you. To you guys. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, gentlemen. All the best. Thank you. Pleasure.